The emulation floodgates are finally open. After a decade and a half of strict prohibition, Apple is letting game emulation apps ship across their app stores on iPhone, iPad, and Mac. That means a wide range of consoles, starting from early 2D systems all the way up to the Nintendo 3DS, can finally be emulated on Apple devices without any sideloading or hacks. But how do these games actually run on an iPhone? What kinds of configuration hassles can you expect? And what does the future of emulation on iPhone look like? Setting up emulators on iPhone is fairly simple. I've downloaded three of the top emulation apps here, Delta, PPSSPP Gold, and RetroArch, all of which are available openly in the App Store. These apps started springing up a few weeks ago in the wake of an Apple policy change that finally allowed fully featured emulators on the App Store. Loading games into your iPhone is fairly simple as well, or at least it can be. The simplest option here is to get the games into the downloads folder on the iPhone. Downloading the games directly on the device is an option, as is getting the games on a Mac and using AirDrop or uploading the files to iCloud storage and retrieving them on the device. For RetroArch, you may need to move the games from the iPhone downloads folder into the RetroArch folder for them to appear, which is a pain, but isn't very complicated. Depending on the emulators you want to use, adding BIOS files to the system folder may also be needed. In terms of emulator support, Delta currently supports older Nintendo consoles, including the NES, SNES, N64, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, GBA, and DS, while PPSSPP only supports the Sony PSP. RetroArch is a front end for a huge number of cores, spanning most of the significant 2D systems and extending into 5th gen consoles and 7th gen portable platforms. Delta has a pretty nice user interface for browsing available games, though PPSSPP Gold and RetroArch are a little more clunky. That holds especially true for RetroArch, which doesn't seem to have been designed with iOS conventions in mind and has a very convoluted interface. I sampled a good variety of 8 and 16-bit software just to make sure that they ran reasonably well on the hardware. The GBA titles I played seemed to run just fine for the most part, including the Crash Bandicoot and Mario themed kart racers for the GBA and shooters of various kinds, including Iridian 3D and Doom. There are some issues typical of GBA, like how using flickering to fake transparencies doesn't work well on good quality contemporary displays, but these issues can be resolved by tweaking the emulator core settings. And if you do like the look of display emulating shaders, those are available as well. Other systems, like the 32X and Game Gear, seem to run without issue, though I wouldn't discount the possibility of spotting other substantial emulation problems in these weaker systems. In general, you're getting a pretty good experience. Obviously, performance issues shouldn't show up with these weaker systems, but at least we aren't seeing any especially unusual issues in popular software. Testing across RetroArch and Delta produced a similarly good experience for me, and all the available emulator cores seem to run just fine. I'm using a game Sir Galileo for my testing here, but touch controls are an option as well if you prefer. I would strongly recommend using a proper controller though, ideally a sliding controller like the ones I have on screen now. Delta is actually all right without a controller for slower paced titles because it has great default controller skins and force feedback when you press a virtual button, but for most titles, I'd insist on a physical pad. Next, I tried the 32-bit class systems, starting with the PS1. Gran Turismo ran just fine here, with just the occasional 16 millisecond frames sprinkled in the mix every so often. Quake 2 and Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage hit a consistent 30 FPS throughout my gameplay, although that 16 millisecond frame issue returned here. With default settings, Crash Team Racing struggled a bit more, suffering from some bouts of sub-30 FPS performance, though the game on original hardware also isn't a locked 30. N64 posed greater problems. By default, RetroArch on iPhone seems to run these games at a higher than usual speed, accelerating 30 FPS games to 60 FPS. By enabling sync to exact content frame rate in RetroArch settings, I was able to overcome this issue. Unfortunately, Conker's Bad Fur Day exhibited some performance issues and some problems with shadow rendering, and Doom 64 had some annoying frame delivery issues, so I decided to give Delta a shot. Delta doesn't offer any of the configurability of RetroArch, and the only display mode on offer here quadrupled the pixel count of the N64 games I tried, bringing them from 240p to a full 480p. 
F-Zero at least ran at a pretty faultless 60 FPS and presented a pretty solid gameplay experience. Mario Kart 64 wasn't quite as solid as the 16 millisecond frames returned here, as was Super Mario 64, which had a very similar performance profile. The frame buffer effect used to display the track side screens in Mario Kart also wasn't working in Delta. I gave Conquer a shot here, and the game had some troubling visual issues that rendered it a bit of a non-starter in addition to performance problems. Finally, I moved on to DS gameplay and RetroArch. Mario Kart DS ran pretty well in my experience, though there were some one-off dropped frames in the mix that were noticeable. New Super Mario Bros seemed to run at a consistent 60 and felt pretty solid here. Asphalt Urban GT also managed a solid 60 in my experience. Geometry Wars Galaxies came in with a decent 30 FPS update, though there were again some frame time issues. I really stuck to titles that played well without the bottom touchscreen, as accommodating the DS's dual screen form factor is challenging on a phone. The DS is a pretty easy system to emulate from a technical perspective though, so achieving glitch-free playback isn't too difficult. Delta also offers DS emulation, which seems broadly similar to the experience under RetroArch. Using the Melon DS core here, performance was about the same, with similar framerate perturbations in 30fps titles. Let's step up to the Sony PSP. The story should be pretty familiar here at this point. 60fps targeting games appear to run very well without obvious frame pacing issues in my capture. The likes of Ridge Racer and Soul Calibur operate just fine without obvious issues. The 30fps titles, namely games like Burnout Legends, SSX on Tour, and Ratchet and Clank Size Matters do generally run fine albeit with frame pacing issues, which are less pronounced in some games, like Burnout, and more pronounced in others. Games that are tough for emulators in general, like MotorStorm Arctic Edge, don't fare too well here though with obvious visual issues. The God of War titles are a sort of interesting outlier. These titles ran with an unlocked frame rate on actual PSP hardware, and should be running at 60fps under emulation on a device as powerful as an iPhone 15 Pro. But the actual performance level of these titles was quite inconsistent, often landing in the 40s and 50s. Running with a 3x resolution multiple didn't seem to change the performance picture here much at least. The outcome with a dedicated PPSSPP Gold app was similar in some respects, but performance was broadly inferior. Soul Calibur had near constant frame rate dips, for instance, and SSX on Tour suffered from serious frame pacing woes that I didn't see under RetroArch. Finally, I tried 3DS emulation, which is available through an app called Folium. I couldn't get any 3D game to run at full speed in my testing, as everything was beset by constant frame rate drops and stutter. Games also suffered from frequent crashes, and I had to restart the emulator between game launches, or else I would get bizarrely stretched graphics. I think an issue here is the emulator's lack of JIT, or just-in-time compilation support. The basic problem is that Apple doesn't allow this form of translation to be used outside of web browsers. More advanced gaming systems typically require JIT compilation to run fast enough machine code to emulate games at full speed. So systems like the 3DS may have additional performance issues without it. The 3DS does use an ARM architecture, like the iPhone, but it's a much older and more primitive design. This is actually largely the reason why we don't see PS2 or GameCube emulation on iOS or iPadOS at the moment. On PC, emulators like Dolphin and PCXS2 depend on chip compilation support to run effectively, to translate PowerPC and MIPS instructions to the modern ARM architecture that the iPhone uses, which really demands JIT. Developer Oatmeal Dome has demoed the difference on an iPhone 15 Pro Max, and the JIT compiled code clearly runs much more quickly. The feature does present a potential security risk, which is presumably why Apple hasn't enabled it to date, but it really is a prerequisite for running these more advanced console systems at a good speed. Technically, it is possible to ship an emulation app that uses JIT compilation, like through various unofficial alternative app stores with a developer account, but Apple prohibits its use through the app store itself. The current state of emulation on iPhone is infinitely better than it was a few short months ago. Until April of this year, Apple enforced a regime of complete prohibition over emulators, banning the distribution of any app that could potentially run unlicensed games. Since the policy change, a wide range of emulators have become available, including the huge spectrum of emulation cores available in RetroArch. 
older and less powerful systems emulate pretty well on the iPhone. My only broad iPhone specific complaint with the PSP and most weaker consoles comes down to frame pacing which does seem to be a concern with 30fps games. Some titles run just about okay, others have periodic issues, and some others present near constant troubles. Frame pacing is a recurring problem with iPhone games that I've noticed in a wide range of 30fps software. More advanced consoles do run poorly on the system. We have a functional 3DS emulator available, but it's buggy, unstable, and has severely degraded performance. GameCube, PS2, and Wii emulators aren't available through official channels as of yet, but even if they are submitted and can pass app review, I'd suggest staying away. These emulators really demand JIT compilation to function properly, so unless Apple lifts that restriction, there's little point to having them on the App Store. But at the moment, as long as you're primarily interested in games originating from less powerful systems, I'd say the iPhone does a perfectly decent job handling emulation duties. It's not faultless, but it does the job reasonably well. To enable anything from a 6th gen home console onwards though, Apple will have to intervene. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and press the bell for YouTube notifications. Check out the Patreon at digitalfunder.net for exclusive and early access content and to get in touch use social media. Thanks for watching.